Ungefragt. Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show with Marta and Anna. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge. And if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta. And this is Anna. And, and Lasse. Lasse. And it's You've Got Five Options. With Lasse. Yes. Correct. <laughs> and we can see that Lasse is so ready to be actively participating in our show today. <laughs> well, uh, he, he is. Uh, wait, it's, uh, it's Le- Lasse, not Lasse? Yeah, it sounded correct. Lasse. No, she, she says it correct. I, I think I'm not doing this. Like, I always call you Lasse. Okay. So it should it's be l- less, l- lesser. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. When you when you do it, it sounds so, like you know, effortless. But it's actually your name, so it should sound effort- effortless, I guess. Okay, less. Super Danish. <laughs> I <will just> <laughs> Please don't say it like that. <laughs> I, yes, I will just stick to Lasse. Yeah, okay. that's good. Yes. So it's uh, us. We are back in the radio and uh, I was really hoping that when we are back in mid-April, we can finally tell you, wow, guys, the weather is so amazing and we are so happy, but it's not amazing. It's cold, it's windy and stuff. So no good news on the weather department. Nope. But anyway, we have a challenge. Yes, because this is what we always have and not our own challenge. Uh, although we also have challenges, Marta, wouldn't you agree? Well, I was a bit confused because when I saw the challenge coming to my mailbox, it was saying that it's from Anna M. And uh, Anna that sits uh, next to me, she has gone by Anna M for about 10 years. So yes. I was like, is that Anna's challenge? Is she about to get married with a French guy? And she didn't tell me anything. What the hell? But no. No, no. And then when we read it even more, uh, when I read it, then I saw that it's about a Polish girl and a French guy. And we have actually a very good Polish friend that's marrying a French guy in July. And I was like, it's from her. But then when we started to dig even more, uh, it didn't look like me nor like her. So uh, I think that's a good news because then it would mean we are writing challenges in our sleep. Yeah. So anyway, we got an urgent challenge from Anna M. And we are going to read it now. Uh, Which means I am going to read it now. Okay. So the challenge goes like this. And I will read it uh, like in a full version because I think it's awesome. And thank you, Anna M. Because it starts like this. Hello, ladies. And Lasse, I assume. So don't (laughs) worry. I believe nobody can answer my problem better than you two. So I decided to give it a shot. Thank you, Anna M. We, we, we believe you came to the right place. The love of my life comes from another country. We just got engaged and now we need to decide. Where do we marry? The thing is, his family is huge. He has a lot of cousins and uncles and aunts and he constantly keeps in touch with them. On my side, the family is way smaller. He's French and I'm Polish, by the way. And here comes the problem. We think it is impossible to transport his family to Poland for a wedding because it is just a lot of people who need accommodation. And here comes the money part. I am not sure we can support them all. On the other hand, my Polish family would not afford completely to go anywhere else for wedding and I don't want to allow getting married without my family being present. That being said, we totally struggle about the time and the place because we are unable to gather everyone together. Not even mentioning our international friends, which is another story. Do you have any tips on how and where to marry an international? And yes, of course we do. We actually married internationals. Yeah, so definitely, Anna, you came to the right place. Yes, and half of us actually succeeded in being still married. Yeah, so maybe you should choose my model. (laughs) Yes, <laughs> as it seems to work better. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, maybe it has something to do with uh, other stuff as well, not only where uh, we got married. Like like the husband, maybe. Oh, yeah, we're so smart and funny. Yeah, it could be the case. Yeah, Choosing the right husband is probably a more important factor in staying happily married. Than the place. Yeah, probably. So 
Anna, we of course have a lot to say about that because we live an international life. We both got married internationally and basically 90% of our friends have married internationally. Some of them more than once. That's not me. <laughs> Yet. Yet. And by... <laughs> Yet. <laughs> Any day now. And by the way, each time you are saying Anna, <laughs> I think you are talking to me. So I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's okay, Anna M, that is a really, really cool joke you pulled on, on us today. Okay, I will try to like, uh, just say Anna M. Oh, no, this is bad again, because I was Anna M for 10, year, 10 years. Okay. And now you're Anna N. So yes, <laughs> which is, oh my God, so different. Okay, I will, I will try to get it from how you, what you, you are saying, Marta. Okay. So, Anna, we have prepared five wedding models for marrying internationally for you. And these are basically the solutions that we have been observing among our friends. And none of those solutions is better than the other. Everyone has to find the right solutions for themselves because everyone has different circumstances. And we have decided to bring those five models, discuss some pros and cons of each of those models. And also, of course, we when we are discussing them, we are taking under consideration the details that you have provided in your challenge description. But we want to encourage you to go through those models and write the pros and cons together with your partner. Because, of course, you have some inside knowledge that we don't, because we don't know you. And uh, that's basically the idea. But before we get down to those five wedding models, we actually would like to help you with some powerful questions that will then be supportive when you have to select one of those models. Because the models themselves, they are pretty obvious, at least a majority of them. So it's all about how do I choose the right one for myself? So I'll tell you what the models are, and then we are going to discuss a little bit those powerful questions. Model one is wedding in her country. Boom, that's such a, I know you didn't expect that. I know. Yes, this and is th like a shocker. Yeah, and now wait for model number two. <laughs> wait for it. W wait for it. Wedding in his country. What? <laughs> I know, yeah, right? I shocked yeah. Lasse. And then model number three, Two weddings, one in her country, one in his country. That's at least a little bit, you know. A uh, little bit. My sister did that. Yeah. yeah. Oh. oh. So we have some uh, experience here that we can talk about. Model number four, wedding in a neutral country. Mm -hmm. And model number five, Las Vegas style wedding. Mm -hmm. So we have those five models for you and we will discuss them a little bit further on. But before we get there, in your challenge description, we could see that you are really struggling what to do. You don't feel that it's easy to get your family to his country. You don't feel that it's easy to get your family to his country. And there is a lot about logistics and the time and place and when. So we thought that it will be really, really nice for the two of you guys to answer a couple of important questions. And question number one is, why are you getting married? What do you really need the wedding for? Because we may have different reasons why we are getting married. And it's very important to bring them to the table because it will be helpful then in, first of all, keeping sane when all these different aspects are coming to the table. And and third, I don't know which number it should go by now. I'm not so good in all this A, B, C. <laughs> and, and mathematics. And mathematics, yeah. Mm -hmm. So alphabet and mathematics. I think I have to come back to the primary school. Just a small refresher. <laughs> yes. But we love you the way you are. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> another aspect is... You're super smart, I just want to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yes. you. I feel like a <laughs> kindergarten kid that <laughs> is told by the teacher, <laughs> you're smart the way you are. But <laughs> no, then I would say you are unique the way you are. You are actually really smart lady. It's just sometimes you mix the numbers and the letters. That's, that happens to some people, <laughs> right? Yes. yes. Okay. So coming back to the question. Yes. Uh, so knowing the answer to what's your real reason for getting married will help you, will be helpful in the process on making, uh, of making the decision on which model to choose. And why did you, Anna, get married? Why did you take this decision of getting married? 
see, and this is what she's doing. <laughs> like she, she, she doesn't tell me what she will ask me, and then mm -hmm. I'm like off guard. And well, that doesn't sound familiar at all. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's not like you have never asked me. <laughs> off guard. <laughs> oh my God, this is so true. <laughs> Actually, guys, Lasse many times doesn't even know what the challenge <laughs> is. It's always so, a surprise. So we are reading yeah. it, you know, like with him, and then he are like so, asking. So if him. my answer is like, duh, <laughs> yeah. that's why. So we ask him like, what's your purpose in life? What's your vision about yourself? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you are you are you are very good with with answering that. But coming back to Marta's question, that is for me, why did I get married? And th that that's actually a really um, funny story because I never planned to get married, meaning I never had, because you know, most of girls, they have this desire and this fantasy of getting married, having a beautiful wedding and so on. I never had that in my system. I never thought about it. And then I met someone and uh, we got engaged and uh, it was more like, I think not for fun, but I didn't really thought about the wedding. And then I had a child and then my mother freaked out and she was like okay you will have a baby you have to get married so i would say that pretty much my mother married us <laughs> <laughs> yeah if she if she could be yeah. the person the officiant, <laughs> the officiant she would yeah <laughs> she couldn't so she arranged it so i actually had a very very small ceremony that was uh, driven by a force of my mother. I enjoyed it because I was more like, I didn't really participate in any preparations. I just went with the flow, same as my ex-husband. So he also enjoyed it. It was more like, yeah, sure, let's do it. So, but that was the reason, you know, ba basically I, I would say now it was a family pressure. Yeah, so I think it's very important to simply, you know, like sit down and think about it. What's the real reason? Why are we even getting married? What do we need that wedding for? Because some of us might do it from very like practical reasons, especially if you are an international couple. It might ease your situation a lot, especially if you are planning having kids. That could be one valid reason. Sometimes we are just pressured by the families. And I actually know a few relationships that were really pressured by the families. And uh, that's something important to uh, know, you know, like be aware of. And some of us actually want to get married because we think that the union before God uh, constitutes our relationship, but it's important for you to find your reasons why. Because uh, they are... Yeah. I agree. I just wanted to make an announcement that I have evolved all, you know, from making random decisions pressured by my mother, just just to make it clear for anyone. Yes. Uh, for any uh, uh, prospective future husband. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that also is correct. Okay. No, but uh, it sounds funny, but you know, it also takes time to evolve from things like this, you know? So, yeah. So think about that and write it down. The second question for you guys is how would yours and your partner perfect wedding look like? Mm -hmm. So it's really about making that vision because in a situation where you are pressured by other people by your family it's actually nice you know to take a break from it realize what's your reason and then make a vision because you know the wedding should be mostly about the two of you it is your special day it's the day where you are promising making your vowels and so on it's a beautiful day or it could be a very stressful event. So basically the idea here is to sit down, relax and talk about the visions. Yeah, now uh, when you said that, Marta, I thought about it because the qu first question was, why are you getting married, right? So there might be one thing, the marriage itself, and for instance, people would say, we really want to be married because we want to, let's say, as you beautifully said, and I think this is, you know, the reason just to promise ourselves something and, you know, in front of a witness or God or officiant, whatever. And another actually question is, do you want to have a wedding? Because you can get married and you might not even give a damn about the wedding. That's why I think second question is extremely important because maybe you don't have visions of your perfect wedding because you don't really need a wedding to begin with. You only want to get married. Yeah, definitely. And basically, you know, you two guys sit down and you figure out because it could be that one of you has a vision of like, you know, big fat Greek wedding and all the family members there, whilst the other one would uh, more likely uh, get married on a beach just with the officiant and two witnesses. And it's important to get those visions in place and also how strongly you feel about them. Because some people, oh, it would be the best to get married just in, I don't know, Las Vegas, but I'm okay with doing it different way. 
So it's very important to get those visions in place and also be able to compare them to see how different or similar they are. It seems like you are both into the family wedding style, but it could be pressured by the family. So when you got your reason and you got your perfect visions, it will be much better to figure out what's the best model for you. And that's where the third question kicks in. What are yours and your partner's priorities? when it comes to the wedding and what are you able to let go of in order to keep your priorities. So several things can happen here. There are situations where the wedding is like, you know, the girl had her vision since she was a little girl and she even knows what colors the napkins should be. And she's really driving the entire process. I have seen this kind of scenarios. There could be a scenario where the guy actually wants to be just as involved as the girl and the two people just have to negotiate <laughs> every single aspect, which cake, what, which color of the napkins and so on. There are those scenarios as well, or it could be, you know, somewhere in between, but it's like really important to settle what are your priorities. If your priority is, for example, to ensure that all the pa family members are there, that's a very useful information for you to be able to choose the right model. We have one that uh, allows this one for sure. So it's just like really, really important for each one of you to write down, let's say, top three priorities that you have when it comes to the wedding and then discuss them if they are really different, which are you able to let go of? If they are the same, then you are perfect. Then it's just a matter of getting the right budget for yourself and organizing logistics. But it's like really, really important that you get those priorities in place. Yeah, Lassa, do you have your top three priorities about your future future uh, wedding? <laughs> Duh. No. <laughs> uh, no. No? I have to admit, no, I don't have Okay. That. Okay. So if, uh, if a girl wants to have like a special arrangement, you will not be fighting with her over the color of the napkins? <laughs> Uh, no, I guess I won't. I'm um, sorry, not a especially profound answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a promising answer for all the napkin freaks out there that are interested <laughs> in marrying you. <laughs> well, I would just like to say that on my list of priorities, there are napkins, number one, <laughs> with unicorns. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, see, Lasse, it's th there are different people, but yes. all, the, all the napkin freaks lady, you know, Lasse won't fight with you. So are you planning like a unicorn themed wedding where all your guests will have to have a, how is the corn? The horn? The horn. Yeah. Is, is it hard? Is it hard? Is it now? Hardcore? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not sure how it's called. The sticky thing horn? from the... The sticky thing? The okay. sticky thing that yes. makes the horse the unicorn mm -hmm. is the horn. The pointy thing. The pointy okay, thing. Google time. Yes. yes. You know, Marta, it changes daily, to be honest. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. I think I think the most beautiful thing about not having a vision of your wedding is that you actually can have any wedding, you know. So, um, yeah, but I think I would like to have those napkins with unicorns. I, I don't know. I mean, at, at that point, it uh, I think it would be up to her. You know, it's also her special day. So <laughs> if she wants to have unicorn napkins or... Then sure. Okay, so <laughs> I guess that's no. I won't stand in the way of that. But you know, actually, uh, I think that men more and more are getting involved into the wedding preparations. I think one of the issues are money. Is money mm -hmm. right? Like how much it will cost? Like what the hell are you doing? You know, you are spending too much or uh, agreement on the budget. And I think even here we have a little bit of a discussion about money because they are thinking, you know, how to bring the families over to those different countries. And it's like his family is really huge, so they cannot bring everyone. <laughs> and then you cannot just make a selection. I will just, you know, like uh, invite three uncles and the rest, you know, out. And with her, you know, her family cannot afford to travel. So I think money can be that point when actually a future groom and a bride may start to have an argument, you know, because it's it's cool, you know, if you want uh, uh, napkins with unicorns, but then if if I would say I want them with, you know, like gold, then it's uh, it's already changing the situation, right? So I think that money can be quite a problem. Well, you bring a very important issue here because planning the wedding together and having all the conflicting wishes and money is definitely one of the big ones, but it's actually a great test 
for a couple? How good you are as a team? How well can you cope with having different priorities? How well can you cope with having different wishes? And uh, organizing such a big event together, that's a really, really good uh, test for a couple. Definitely a great opportunity to figure out how it's going for you guys. But really, yeah, we wanted to give you those three questions so that when we are discussing all the models and going through pros and cons, you can refer back to, okay, my real reason to get married is this one. My priority, my vision of the wedding is this one and my priorities are those ones. That should really ease your decision making process. But let's start with the models. So the first really groundbreaking model, yes, was wedding in her country. So basically here, of course, we have uh, noted down for you some pros and cons and uh, the article is already released on our website. So all of you can go and check it at the five options.com. But basically here, uh, we just since we have some inside knowledge by being Polish, we could figure out some of the pros and cons just to give some examples. But actually the pros that we came up with uh, were that in Poland, traditionally, the wedding is actually organized by the family of the bride and it should happen in her church. That's the like the old tradition. So if you are traditional people, you could bring that tradition to the table, Anna, but I'm not sure how big of a, you know, how big of a deal it is here. So we have some like we spoke about money and in general, it is cheaper to organize a wedding in Poland than in France. That's something that is a fact uh, when you uh, when you take money into consideration. So that's a strong pro. And uh, also uh, taking under consideration the uh, incomes in Poland and in France, it is relatively cheaper for French people to travel to Poland than for Polish people to travel to France. And there are a lot of cheap flights right now. Yeah, so, uh, well, the cheap flights, they work both ways, but at least, you know, taking under consideration the income, it is cheaper for French people uh, to go to Poland as, and Poland is cheaper than France. So money, you know, here is uh, one aspect you can take under consideration. And also you have mentioned that your family is smaller. So even if only half of your husband's family can travel over to Poland, can afford that, he'll still get a lot of people over to the wedding. And also a nice pro here is that you would give your partner's family an opportunity to get to know your culture. Which is awesome because it's Polish culture. Yeah, I have never been to a French wedding, but Polish weddings, that's experience. They're, they're <laughs> are legendary. Yeah, so all the friends from all the countries in the world that have ever participated in a Polish wedding, they're always impressed. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an experience indeed. And I think that's a very strong argument for any international to actually get married in Poland. Or at least participate in a Polish wedding. Yes. Yeah, get yourself Polish friends and go uh, see the wedding in Poland. It's uh, awesome. Yeah, but wrapping up that option, there is actually something really, there are two things that uh, stood out from your description, Marta. One was that indeed in Poland, this is a tradition that a, a husband follows the wife religion-wise and church-wise, which is a really nice gesture because afterwards he doesn't follow at all. <coughs> Where did that come from? So at least this, <laughs> maybe it's <laughs> like a trick. Uh, but this is a very traditional thing, you know, even if you are like in, in Poland, we have Orthodox and Catholics. So if, if uh, a wife is a Catholic, the, um, the husband will marry in Catholic church. Well, now it's figured <coughs> out that now you ha can have actually both in the same time. And the second thing is that Anna actually has mentioned that she cannot imagine to get married without her family being present. So we can already sense it is a priority for, for, for Anna, for you. But the question is also um, why you cannot imagine this. And I think this is something that you can think about when asking those three questions. Is it the pressure that you are receiving from your family or is it something that you truly want? And that was all I had to say about this uh, model. Okay, I'll also just have a look a little bit on the cons of that model. So you would be organizing the wedding in the country where the number of family members is smaller. As we understand, your uh, partner has a bigger family. And of course, the con is also that if you select that model, you are strongly in favor of her and her family. So that's one that could that one thing that could be a disadvantage, which in Poland would be totally understandable because that's the tradition. But in France may not be. Yeah, it 
it may be, you know, a different uh, scenario. And of course, the con is uh, then that your family doesn't get the opportunity to get to know your partner's culture because maybe weddings in France are even cooler. I think they are very, very nice. I'm sure, you know, in France, some good wine, some good... Very chic and stuff, yeah, but you know. Yeah. I'm sure it's very, very nice. But that's what we came up with. Of course, the idea here is that you guys sit down and write those pros and cons, especially if you would like to be able to prioritize them later. So that's a really important point here. And we wanted to touch upon the second model, which is the wedding in his country. And the good uh, thing about this model is that the pros and cons uh, are basically the opposite. <laughs> so <laughs> what were the pros in the wedding in her country, they become the cons. Exactly. And the other way around. So the thing here is that it's still a good idea to write them down because you simply have probably some other things that we don't know about. Like, for example, it could be that your husband is like really close with all his uncles, aunts and cousins, and it's like really extremely important for him. It could be some other things. Maybe you have a place in France that would be like really cheap for organizing this wedding because some family member owns a beautiful restaurant or whatever. You may have some additional things that we don't know about, but it's important to write those pros and cons. Yeah, and maybe it's the French family that's paying for the wedding. Yeah, it, there could be some other things. What we would like to encourage you to do as you are writing those pros and cons, you know, think out of the box. As you are starting the process, allow yourself to be creative. No ideas are bad or good. It's important to open up because you may find some solutions that may seem crazy at the beginning, but they are actually uh, quite uh, good solutions. Yeah, I think a lot of crazy ideas at the beginning seem to be crazy and then they are actually amazing. I know it from my own experience. Yeah, so basically, Anna, in, uh, we will be wrapping up now the first uh, episode of your challenge. And uh, we have uh, given you the three really important questions to ask yourself, both you and your partner. And we have given you the first two groundbreaking models that you have uh, described already in your challenge description as the ones uh, that are difficult to choose between. So we hope that you will join us for the second episode where we will be giving you a perspective of choosing three different models that are not as obvious as the first two ones. And we hope that you will join us and yeah, we wish you good luck with answering the first three questions. Yes. So, Anna and everyone else, stay tuned for the next episode. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. You are listening to You've Got Five Options show, where we solve your life challenges. Remember that you can visit our website the5options.com where you can submit your challenge or find our previous challenges. That's all, folks! Du lytter til din lokale radio i Aarhus på FM 98,7 MHz og 89,5 MHz.
Radio Eoros, o FM, ou já fez como sua manhã, 